I had to be slightly later than I planned tonight, but I hope it was, uh, wasn't too bad. I am, um, my kids are like wired. Oh, by the way, I'm out of my Eid clothes. I was in some Eid clothes. Um, and uh, my makeup's like half washed off, but what are you gonna do? Um, but yeah, I wanted to hop on for all those who are celebrating Eid. And we're back, sorry. Um, the internet connection's not that great. I've just changed the thingy, so I hope that is better. Um, but yes, um, I was just saying that I am obviously not someone who is very religious, obviously, I think we're all aware of that at this point. But I just like celebrating stuff and having a good time and dressing up and, you know, I, we go all out for Christmas and, you know, we do, we have done Diwali sometimes. I'm not from a Hindu background or Hindu, but um, we've celebrated with friends and we, you know, have family who celebrate Eid, so we do it with them. Um, I don't, I don't have a lot of my family anymore, but, you know, we Eid's parents and siblings. Um, okay, well, the parents, really, are the ones that are religious. Um, Siblings-wise, we're all kind of on the same, the same boat. But, yeah, it's just a bit of fun, isn't it, really? So I'm just kind of wondering as well what you guys are up to in Eid. Are you guys celebrating Eid? Are you guys dressing up with your families? Are you kind of resenting Eid at this point? Um, you and your husband celebrate Easter by taking your kids? Yes, we do lots of Easter egg hunts. I've hosted big Easter parties at my house with uh, my kids and my friend's kids. And yeah, it's all just fun, isn't it? I've like got an Easter bunny and, you know, hidden eggs everywhere. My son is obsessed with, my eldest son is obsessed with, cars and like monster trucks and and chocolate to be fair as well so so for easter we did that as well where we did like we i did like a monster truck themed egg hunt so that in the eggs were monster trucks and he was like ecstatic it was like the best thing ever but especially for kids it's like it's just something fun to do it's just you know i am um, I'm not really for the whole fasting without water thing. So I know obviously this Eid is because of Ramadan. That's why I'm referring to that. I I think fasting though is really, really good for you. I think I said this in my other live stream. Um, but with water, and I know lots of studies have been done on fasting. And I think a lot of people like Muslims quote those, those uh, studies. But actually those studies were done with not, like with also having like liquid, you know, um, but, you know, as I said last time, we've evolved to not eat the amount of food. This whole idea of we have to have three meals a day even is kind of just a myth, really. Like, it's not, it's all just made up, isn't it, really? Like, I don't think we we have to live by that rule. Um, so, yeah, it's really interesting. So, anyway, I, I don't even think of it as a religious thing anyway, to be honest, celebrating Eid. I just kind of think of it as this, like, cultural thing, the same way that I think of Christmas as a cultural thing. And I'm all for culture. Like, I love a bit of culture. I definitely want to, like, raise my... I can hear my eldest son is still not sleeping. I actually postponed it an hour because I thought I'd try and get him to sleep and I'm just giving up. So <laughs> he's had a lot of sugar today. I don't know what it is with... Um, like Asian families, but like they just keep wanting to feed him. And I'm like, I think he's had enough sugar. Like he's only three guys. Um, so he's still awake. But um, do you have any superstitions? Not really. Like when you say superstitions, what do you mean exactly as well? Also, can you hear me okay? Because there's still loads of people in the house and there's a lot of noise everywhere. So I don't know if they're interfering with my sound um but yeah I don't really know what you mean by that um I don't believe in anything like evil eye or stuff like that if that's what you mean then no well that was weird um oh wow I said that and then it, the light just flashed was that a sign just kidding Mimsy I know this is out of nowhere but Passover 2024 is on April 
22nd until... I, wait, what? What is that? I don't know. I, I don't understand. Please explain. <laughs> what do you mean? What are you talking about? Um, yeah, hi, guys. What are you guys doing? Like broken mirror, 10 years bad luck. Oh, yeah, that kind of stuff. No, I don't believe in that stuff. Do you believe in that? I don't. I just think it's just like old wives' tales kind of stuff. Like, it's just fake, right? Um, there's no, like, scientific accuracy behind it. I think when I was Muslim, I probably believed in stuff a little bit more. But even then, I was skeptical. Um, but, yeah, like walking on cracked pavements and that sort of stuff. I don't know. I don't know if I ever believed it because it's just, it's just not true, is it? Unless, you know, if you want to believe it, that's cool. <laughs> I just personally don't. Um, but yeah, how is everyone's Eids going? It's so noisy over there. I don't, I really hope you guys can even hear me right now and not hear the chaos that's happening in the other room. It's Waleed causing chaos with other family members being very loud and obnoxious. I'm just kidding. Um, no, I don't believe in it, but my non-religious family members do, which is interesting. That is interesting. I don't really get it. I don't really get it if you don't believe in sort of supernatural, well, I guess they do sort of believe in supernatural stuff. I, you know what? There is something weird about me though, if you want to know weird things. I am fascinated by mediums and by like people that say that they speak to the dead. I watch all those shows. I'm just so enthralled by it. And I get the whole fake thing. Like I watched, I don't know if you know Darren Brown. I watched the whole like breaking down of how like the mediums fake it and they just kind of grasp at like random stuff to see, especially when it's like a big live audience. So I know that like there's so many fakes out there. And then I also think the ones that seem real, they're probably just like, a, it's just like a fake TV show. You know what I mean? Like the TV show itself is fake. And like, maybe they're all just actors, but there's this little part of me that is so fascinated at this idea. And also, the, I don't know if anyone's seen those shows about like um, reincarnation, about little kids, little kids like saying their past lives and like, details like ran that kind of stuff really freaks me out and I'm really intrigued I wouldn't say I believe it fully I'm just so intrigued and I almost want to be proven wrong I want I want someone to prove it to me so much so this is a bit weird actually I don't know if I want to say this live but you know what I'm just gonna say it <laughs> I'm a weird person I was talking to a I won't say who but I was talking to a family member not my husband or anything an elder family member um, who's really close to me. And I was like, when you pass away, I want to go to a medium and see if I can connect with you just so I know, okay? Because it's like a thing that just nags at me. Like, what if there's a potential? Like, what if? It's just like a what if for me. And so, and he thought this was hilarious. He was like, oh, okay, it's obviously stupid. But I was like, right, this is what we're going to do, okay? We're going to have like a code so think of a word that you're going to say. Now, when you die, <laughs> obviously it'd be a really sad situation, but I don't know, we kind of, we're a bit dark, I guess. But I was like, when you die, I'm going to go to a medium and I want that medium to say the, this word. I'm not going to say what the word is because it might give it away who it is, but, um, and he was like, okay, cool. So we came up, he came up with a word. And so I'm like, that will be my proof. Like if that medium says that word, which is so random, like it would be so, there's like, there'd be no other way this person would, do you know what I mean? Like would, would know that to say that, then I would probably, I would come back on here and be like, guys, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Anyway. <laughs> oh dear. Anyways, um, what are you guys doing for Eid? Are you guys like celebrating Eid? Are you into it? Are you over it? Are you under it? <laughs> uh, my birthday day, I turned 32. <gasps> We're really close in age. Hi. My mum messaged me Eid Mubarak, but no happy birthday. Lol. <laughs> I don't have anything to do with my family anyway. I left them almost 10 years ago. Oh, sorry. That was actually ended on quite a sad note. <laughs> wow. Okay. 
That's really, I'm really sorry that she didn't even say happy birthday. Happy birthday. And I hope you had a fantastic birthday and don't ever let Eid eclipse your birthday because guess what? Your birthday makes this Eid even more special and you were brought into the world on this day and you're a fantastic person. I'm sure you are. Z2022. <laughs> Sorry, I do really weird laughs sometimes. Is my kid still asleep? I mean, still awake? I should be asleep. I'm tired. I'm so tired, guys. I've had a lot of food, a lot of food today. <sighs> I don't eat a lot recently. Since I've had kids, I haven't been eating a lot, which I know is really bad. But because I need the energy, but I just get really like focused on everything I have to do and I forget. I know there are people out there like me that do that. I forget to eat because I just feed everyone else. And then I forget and then I'm like, I haven't eaten anything all day. <laughs> I do that a lot. Um, but today I've eaten so much because so many other people have cooked and I haven't had to do anything. And everyone's like playing with my kids, which is fantastic, but then also giving them sugar, which hasn't been great. Um, so it's been a really nice day, like a proper brown person day. <laughs> Just a normal, normal brown person day, to be honest. Having other people take, have the village take care of your kids and eat a bunch of crap. I mean, let's face it, we do, don't we? Um, I dressed up, it's really funny because I dressed up the boys. I wish I could show you guys pictures, but also my kids are so freaking cute. So I really want to like show everybody and be like, look how cute they are. They're so cute. Like they're so beautiful. Like I just, I wish I could show you, but I can't because I don't really want to like put their pictures online or anything, but they're so adorable. I put them in Moroccan outfits and Pakistani outfits today. And we did a whole photo shoot and everything. Cause I was like, you know what? Like let's celebrate culture. You know, let's, there was weirdness and effed upness I'm being careful because I, I know there's lots of people around. I don't want them to be like, what the hell's going on in there? Um, but yeah, there's, there's obviously weirdness, right? That, you know, we won't go into right now. But there's things I don't agree with, which if you're on my channel, you know what I don't agree with. Plenty of the I was going to say a plethora and then plenty at the same time. <sighs> I need to sleep. Anyway, um, I don't agree with a lot of stuff. But why can't we just keep the fun stuff? you know, and the nice stuff. I actually made a video on what I love about Muslims. I don't know if anyone has seen that video or remembers that video, but basically that's kind of celebrating like cultural aspects that I don't feel there's any reason to let go of, you know? Um, let's have a look what's going on. Oh, the best one was when Darren Brown pretended to be a faith healer. Yeah, that was a really good one. I love Darren Brown. He is just so cool like his his stuff's awesome and i love how he just uncovered what's the right word my brain's too tired but he just kind of like exposed that's the word i was looking for exposed a lot of bullshit didn't he what about fortune tellers so my sister the other day was like we need to go tarot card reading i was like what i just don't believe i just i just i need to be proven okay i need proof right now i don't believe it anything but like I said I kind of want to be proven like I, I just think it's so interesting to me and like I've heard so many stories of like this woman told me that this would happen and like the details exactly and you know I've heard so many people tell me stuff like this and I'm like that's amazing I kind of want to experience that a little bit more like because I just think it's cool like where does it come from like I don't think it comes from any kind of like religion or anything like that or any sort of God, because I don't believe in a God, but I kind of just, I don't know, man, I don't know, it's cool, right? Like, I want to believe in, like, the universe and, like, something. I don't want to believe in something, I don't have to believe in something, don't get me wrong. I'm also, this is something that Muslims find really hard when I have had conversations with them, like, people in my family or just whatever, random people. The fact that I'm just okay with also just not knowing, like, they'll say to me, like, but when you die, what's going to happen? But what's going to happen when you die? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, it's okay that I don't know. I don't know. I can't tell you. You know, I'm okay with not knowing. And it's, for them, it's like, oh, I have to know. I have to know. I have to know the details. I have to know, like, that I'm going to walk on this rope and then I'm going to go to hell or heaven and I'm going to blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you don't really have to know. And that's all rubbish anyway. 
Ah, I personally think superstitions are induced by anxiety and OCD, possibly. I have been watching Seatbelt Psychic recently. Oh, I haven't heard about that one. I'm also fed about Becky's talking about this. Right? Kids talking about their supposed previous lives. What the actual heck? Like, are they just all fake? Like, are they telling the kids to say this? Because they're kids. And they're coming up with these, like, these, like, I've seen so many shows of it now. Like, there was one kid that was, like, telling all these details of, like, I was this person. Or, sorry, I'm, I have so many thoughts coming now. Or those kids that, like, play the piano. Have you seen that? Like, little baby, one-year-old, one-and-a-half-year-old, two-year-olds, just going, like, Mozart. And then they're, they're like, well, yeah, they were a pianist in their previous life. It's like, freaking heck, that's crazy. I love stuff like that. It's just so interesting to me. Um, right, hold on. Mimsy, speaking about Nabil Qureshi, former Muslim who converted to Christianity from the last live stream, who passed away. Oh. Wait, what? Oh, you're speaking about him. I don't know who that is. But that's awful. I'm really sorry. Oh, was it? Did it come up in the last live stream? I can't remember. Sorry, my memory is just so bad these days. Um, okay, there was a child who saw Jesus as, as a child, but was never exposed to Jesus' figure through religion or anything else. Yeah, I, I mean, I hear lots of religious stuff as well, but I think I hear people say that, like, they see Jesus, like, they, they died. Have you heard those ones where they, like, died and saw Jesus and then they, like, were touched by him and then they, like, came back again? But I just feel like that is what they experience because that's kind of through their own perspective or their own lens, you know, like, if they understand the world that way, whatever they did experience, they will see what they know, if that makes sense. Like, if it was a Hindu, it would have been a Hindu god, do you know what I'm trying to say? I don't, like, I obviously don't believe <laughs> that it's a religious thing or that Jesus would do that or, like, Muhammad would do that or anything. Um, my mum says that she, my mum is still a very religious Muslim and she's very Sufi and she thinks that, well, she truly believes it. I don't think she makes it up or anything. She, like, is convinced that she, like, has dreams which are real interactions with, like, prophets and stuff. So yeah, uh, but when it comes to kids, that's when it, that's when I get kind of like really like oh that's so weird, isn't it? Like not when they're talking about Jesus -y stuff, but when they're talking about like detailed past lives, it's like how there's some information that they wouldn't even know otherwise, you know. But there's still a skeptical in me that's just like it's probably not true. So I just want to be proven wrong, guys. It's so cool. Uh Right, I want to know why do people who convert to Islam overdo it? <laughs> why are they so behave like they know Islam? Oh, sorry, it's moving. Uh, like they know Islam in and out than the ones who are born Muslims. I mean, I don't know. I can't speak on behalf of all converts, but I would assume if you're born Muslim, you're obviously going to have a different attitude to someone who's become Muslim because you're you you know you've taken this role on. You're way more enthusiastic. So. For them, it's like, also they probably really want to take the role seriously, but also be like prove themselves as a Muslim more than people who are born Muslim. If you're born Muslim, you're just Muslim. But if you're not, then you're like, I am, look, look at me. I'm doing everything I pray for times a day. I wake up, oh, you do that, well, I do this. So I am definitely a Muslim too, <laughs> you know? I think it's definitely like an identity thing. Um, religion was made when first con men met the first four. There you go. I totally agree with that. He replaced one belief with another. You can't be without a belief. What what you call hashtag you is only a belief. If the belief goes, you go with it. But I don't know if I agree with that. That is the reason why if you're not satisfied with the... I think there was more after that. But I don't know if I agree with that. I actually don't like the idea of leaving especially for yeah just the idea of depending on an ideology like leaving mine the one I was part of to then just join another especially if it's very culty like the one I'm 
I was previously a part of. <laughs> Super culty. I don't like the idea of joining something else. I'd much rather be free of the shackles. I don't want to be bound to anything, you know? Are you close with your mum? Not really, to be honest with you. Um, we're cool, don't get me wrong. <laughs> we're cool. <laughs> but, I mean, it depends on what you call close, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. We don't we don't speak all the time, but I see her from time to time. And we have a, a relationship, um, but we're just on. It's like there are some things I appreciate about her, and obviously I love her, but I just feel like we're really on two different wavelengths. So when you say close, like I feel like I'm close to people that I'm on the same wavelength with because I can connect with them on a very intimate level like you know i can really bond with them over stuff have deep discussions and i can talk to them about things that i am struggling with whereas if i don't feel that connected to somebody because we're on different wavelengths it's hard to be close so we're like so we're as good as we c can be if that makes sense I, d I have no sort of bad feelings towards her if anyone doesn't know, I was actually raised by my dad anyway, mainly. Um, so my parents divorced when I was three and my mum had like a mental breakdown. And to be very frank with you, she has had a lot of horrible things happen to her in her life. She had a really hard life. She came from Morocco to this country when she was uh, quite young and awful things I talk about them in my coaching actually because it is stuff that I kind of had to work through myself almost in a way um like her trauma obviously your trauma can be generational if your parents have some baggage it does get transferred to the kids in various ways so if anyone does do coaching with me um I do talk about my story because it, it's it's nice to kind of reflect with my story and so you can understand your story and see patterns and how things work and all that jazz so anyway I talk about it in my story but I won't go into proper detail here but she went through a lot of trauma and um I really believe for her religion is just a crutch like a huge crutch a massive crutch like for her it's the reason she is able to cope with all the immense trauma that she's experienced and has not completely lost her mind and um, without it, I think she'd just feel really lost. Obviously, there could be things she could do, but especially when you get to a certain age in your life and it's been such a big pillar of strength for you, you just need it so much, don't you? Like, you rely on this religion, you rely on this God, you rely on this prophet, you rely on this whole world to be your saviour and to save you and to be the reason that you've struggled and to know that the awful things that have happened to you in your life are going to be okay and happened for a reason and you know it just it kind of helps you make sense of everything um so so yeah so I'm very understanding of that when it comes to my mom I understand that she needs religion um I don't think, I don't believe people need religion, but she is using it in that way, if that makes sense. Like, I do think she could live without it and be great, and but she'd need, like, immense therapy and um, that sort of thing. And to just, yeah, have lots and lots of support to overcome the trauma that she hasn't really faced properly in, what, 50, 40 years? I don't even know how long, right? So it's a lot that I don't know she could handle at the, the age she is, so... A lot of people have experiences with near death, which I personally find interesting. Apparently, psychedelics can produce similar experiences. Yeah, yeah. It's weird, isn't it? I'm really intrigued by all that jazz as well. I Like, whenever there's, like, random YouTube stories about, like, I nearly died, and I, I always watch them. <laughs> I'm always just like, where's it? Willie really hates that kind of stuff. He's like, it's all just rubbish. I'm like, yeah, but this is cool. <laughs> this is really cool. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. The zeal of the convert. Yeah, for sure. Are you... From Pakistan? I'm not from Pakistan. I, I'm kind of like a... So my close friends, who I talk about all the time, I consider them like my fam, extended family sort of thing. They are mostly ex-Muslims and they are pretty much all Pakistani, which is so funny. Um, if not sort of Indian-y heritage. 
Um, and it's really funny because I'm, what's the word? When you're like not, oh, my brain is not functioning. When you're not from there, but you're like a, what's the word? Honorary, honorary. I'm an honorary Pakistani. So I, I feel like every live stream I'm saying where I'm from, us brown people are like, where are you from? Where are you from? Where's your, what brown are you? <laughs> We all just want to know. You're like whenever like, you work in a place and there's another brown person, you're like, where are they from? <laughs> so uh, my mum is from Morocco, which I did mention just a second ago. Uh, my dad is half English and half Egyptian. So that's where I'm from. Who would win in a fight? Allah or Zeus? Come on now. Is that, is that even a question? Is it? Of course, Zeus. Newly converted. I'm just taking my time. Take your time. You know what? My sibling was looking into religion herself because... Oh, I was... I baited her out now. Well, yes, yeah, so it was her. She's my sister. <laughs> I have two, though, so... Um, and it was mainly because she got into a relationship with someone that was religious. Um, I literally bought her a Quran with tafsir, was it just with Tafsir? So with the, like, not just the translation, but the explanation. Like, I wasn't like, don't be a Muslim. I was like, read everything. Read it. Research it. Learn it. And then you decide. That's it. Read it. Read it. <laughs> read it yourself. My advice would be literally, buy one. Of, I literally bought her this, it's like some fat. Fat one. Type in Quran, translation and tafsir. Buy it, read it. Uh, Allah is a moon god. Okay, cool. Um, Allah is. Allah is. Uh, your dad is a lovely man. Oh, yeah. He is a lovely man. And he's been through a lot like he raised his kids pretty much as a single dad so he's done a lot like my mum really struggled with the stuff she'd gone through they're singing over there I don't know if you can hear them I don't know what's going on but it's Eid night it's like it's getting like this is what happens they're actually singing I don't know if you can hear that lecha lecha you probably can't hear them. You can probably just hear me. I'm Imran Noor from Karachi, Pakistan. Oh, I've been to Karachi. I like Karachi. Karachi has a cool vibe. Although, they need to clean up a bit. It's a bit messy. But it's a nice vibe for show. <gasps> What's this? Oh, sorry. Um, th That is true. My parents' stuff really is my whole problem. My parents' stuff. What does that mean? I don't really know what that means. Uh, yeah, I don't know what you mean by that. It is for most people, religion being a crutch. Yeah, 100%. I definitely agree. Sorry, my lashes are being a bit weird. I definitely agree that religion is a crutch for people. Even more so, though, when you've gone through, like, crazy-ass trauma, right? You know? And it's the reason that you haven't broken down because of that trauma, if that makes sense. So for my mom, it's like... It's quite intense what she's gone through. Like multiple things as well. It's not even just one, so. My mum still believes in Islam because her mum believes in it and doesn't want to seem like her bad daughter. That's really sad, isn't it? That's actually even worse because it's like this pressure. Sorry, my eyelash is being so strange. I anyway, know. Um, this pressure to like uphold this weight of like being a good daughter. I know that. I know that weight um is very common for for i was gonna say brown people but you know it's 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 quite a universal thing for sure i think more so in like outside of western countries but even in like east asia right uh, i think that's what is your name wait are you not subscribed subscribe to my channel <laughs> my name is marwa i'm also known as mimsy which has been a nickname that i ended up using for my YouTube. Um, and I am also known as Mia. So I have lots of names. 
me as a name I came up with because nobody could pronounce Marwa. And like my whole school life, well, when I came out of my Muslim school, because I went to a Muslim school and I went to like the real world, everyone would call me Marwa. So when I went to college and I was like, I don't want to be Marwa. I do not want to be Marwa. So I changed my name to Mia. <laughs> I was like, just call me Mia, guys. <laughs> Uh, many atheists experience angels and God during their NDE. -E. Right. Are your siblings Muslim? Uh, no. <laughs> neither sides. Neither side. In law side or my side. Um, Prophet Muhammad was taught by the Jabbar the Christian and went to the Jewish school to enter. Okay, I'm not sure what that reference was about. Uh, would you ever tell a non Muslim not to date or marry a Muslim guy? <laughs> I would basically just it's not about would you tell them not to be with this type of person it's not about that it's about you and that person individually do your goals align so if this person actually is a religious person what does that entail if they are Muslim and they're religious what does that mean for them do they want a life that would revolve around what like what do they see their children being like? Or do they want children? Or, you know, it, it could be, you could say that about anything. Like, what if there was one person that wanted to travel their whole life and didn't want to have kids? And then there was another person who wanted to live in England forever and wanted to have six children. Your values aren't aligned. It doesn't really matter what it is. So I'm not kind of here to say that person shouldn't be with this person. But are your values aligned? And truly, because what will end up happening is if you or, or the other person end up, you know, fostering the other person's values just for the sake of them, for their benefit or for the relationship to keep it going, what ends up happening is eventually over time, you'll just resent them. There will be resentment because that beginning honeymoon phase doesn't last forever. Okay, and, uh, the beginning is always like, oh, wow, like, oh my God, I'm so excited. Like, I'll do anything for this person. I'll give up anything. But after what? Five years, 10 years, 15 years. It's just not going to work. The reality is, if this isn't the truth for you, and this isn't what you really want, you will resent that person for having been the reason that you couldn't do whatever, or you had to do whatever. Yeah, you just need to see what is in alignment. Do you agree on small things, on big things? What are, what are your life ambitions? But also, what are your expectations in the relationship of each other? You know, lots of things. Uh, I, um, I do relationship coaching, by the way. So if this is something you actually, what is going on with these guys? You'd think they were drunk. They're just high on sugar, honestly. Anyway, you can't hear them, but <laughs> they're going crazy. Um, yeah, hit me up if you are interested in relationship coaching. Um, this is something I I do, and I'm a specialist with working with sort of couples, all sorts of couples. Um, otherwise, we will at some point be having a workshop that will be giving, so not necessarily one-to-one -one with us. So you can do one-to-ones with us, but we also do workshops, which we give as videos, um, which people, some people prefer because, you know, it's, um, they do it in their own time. Um, and then it's something you get to keep and look back on, um, and that sort of thing. So if, we do have a relationship workshop coming up that will be something you can buy and keep. And if that's something you'd really be interested in, then drop me an email because um, as we're making it, we can kind of have conversations with people that would be interested. Um, and then we can kind of tailor it as well a little bit more to kind of what your requirements would be. So... Uh, your dad was the first ex-Muslim YouTuber, I think, right? Pretty much, yeah, he was, pretty much. He was the first YouTuber, I'd say. Um, he made YouTubes, uh, YouTubes? He made videos on YouTube um, uh, under the channel of, uh, what's it called? Sorry, I'm so tired, guys. I should probably go to bed. I'm so tired. Uh, I've been up since 5 a.m. Like, my kids, like, 
I just wake up so early. I don't know why. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so Council of Ex-Muslims of Britain, he made videos for them. So when he decided that he didn't believe, he came across Mariam Namazi, the amazing Mariam Namazi, and he basically called her up and was like, oh my God, like, thank you so much for just like, I saw you on ITV or whatever it was. And, you know, and there was at that time, it was literally just her and like two other people. And so he was, you know, very much a part of that beginning of Council of uh, Ex-Muslims. And he started, oh, sorry. He started two things. He started a live online chat because he was like, people like me, if there are people out there like me, we need more like conversations. We need to see each other. We need support because it's so, so difficult. So he started the live chat, online chat thing back in the day. They don't have it anymore, but back in the day, it was a big thing. And he started a YouTube channel for, for Council of Ex-Muslims. Um, so yeah, I was really, I mean, I'm really proud of him now. At the time, I was absolutely embarrassed and devastated and humiliated. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, oh gosh, my battery's actually getting a bit low. I should probably get a charger. All right. Well, it's been 40 minutes. I'll probably go in a bit. <laughs> uh, cool. Why is that light flashing? Uh, my Muslim friend tells me whenever he sees Jews pray, he finds it very funny to me. I do not find it funny at all from where, from the way they pray. I don't know how they pray. I've, the only thing I've seen, I think, is like them reading stuff, like standing and reading, kind of similar to like a Christian sort of, not choir, what's it called? I'm not really sure. Um, but yes. Is marriage really worth it in this day and age, being with the same person forever? Listen, there's no one right way of doing things. Well, it's whatever works for you and the other person. If you don't want to be with one person for the rest of your life, you absolutely don't have to be and you shouldn't be judged for it. If you want to be, and that's something you want to do, then you shouldn't be judged for it either. There isn't a rule book on this, I don't believe so. And especially in this world and day and age, you will have freedom to live the life, to do whatever you want to do. So if there are people that are forcing you to do things, then you need to step away from those people because that's not how you should live your life. It's whatever works for you. That's what I believe. Once you convert to Islam, listen to these Dara people and find it very intriguing and do it even without understanding. Why is that so? Because they're looking for something. They're looking for something. People want answers. And many religions, particularly Islam, give very conclusive, you know, holistic answers that make people feel safe. You want to feel safe. Why would you want answers? You want to feel like you've got everything. You know what's going on. You know what, what happens when you die. You know if you do this, this, and this, then you'll go to the right place. If you don't know, which is which is what I said at the beginning, if you were here, actually, I literally said, Muslims hate it when I say to them that I just don't know. And I'm okay with not knowing. I'm okay with not having all the answers. But for many people, they don't want that. They don't want... Maybe they've had lots of insecurity in their lives. Maybe there's traumas that they haven't gone through. So they need that. As the person said earlier, a lot of people use it as a crutch. It is a crutch. Just, it's just the same for converts. It becomes a crutch for them. It fills a void that they have. Saw your video and why you left. Very funny and trivial. You left because homosexuality is forbidden. Oh, yeah, one. That's <laughs> a 40-minute video, mate, and you pulled out one thing. I literally spoke about maybe a 100 things and chose specific hadiths and specific stories and specific ayahs, and you're like, oh... Because of her position, shut up, man. Go to sleep. Anyways, I wonder if you would still be Muslim if your dad was Muslim. I went through this last time. <laughs> Why does this keep happening? I'll say it again really quickly. Me leaving has nothing to do with my dad. I actually didn't hang out with my dad as much. I lost so much by leaving Islam. My entire friendship network, my close, close cousins who were like sisters to me, and 
they were everything. Like I did everything with them. We were, they were my bridesmaids. I was their bridesmaids, you know, everything in my life. This one person who, yes, I love him and he was my dad, but I just put it down to depression. And my dad never, if anyone knows my dad, he never discussed Islam with me, ever. The only thing I knew about his views was from YouTube. He never spoke to me about it. He was very respectful of the fact that I chose to be religious. And I became more religious because I wanted to bring him back. So you obviously haven't seen my Why I Left Islam video because I became very religious after he left and it really wasn't to do with him it was more me that's why I always say to people if you're thinking about Islam or considering Islam just read everything because that's what I did I read so much and dug so deep that I was like wait there's so many holes there's so many holes it's ridiculous now, what a lot of people do is they overlook those holes. Or you could just realise, actually, I don't agree with this. Which does take a lot of strength um, to do. But I lost so much. I lost even more than my dad lost. So it definitely wasn't for him or he wasn't the reason. I didn't have to give up so much of my, like... It was, I went through actually a depression because I was so lost after realizing I didn't believe in it. I didn't, I didn't, I wanted to believe in it, if that makes sense. I really wanted to believe in it. Like I was trying to prove it right, not wrong. Anyways, um, you were on a slam channel and left because of LGBT lol. Okay, this person's just trying crap. I'm not even going to read their stuff. Uh, it's not even true, mate. Like, the thing is, if you're going to say something and I'm going to respond to it, at least let make it be accurate information. If you're just going to chat crap, I'm not even going to bother responding. I know someone who converted to Islam because she was in love with a Muslim girl. Yeah, that happens. And she converted for him and now she has ended up having mental health issues because of his behavior and gone to psych. Oh, that's really sad. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, maybe I have to go now. Oh, bye. Thank you for coming. Have a good night. You're always, always on my live streams. And I love that. Thank you so much for being here. Sorry, I had to be a late today, a bit late. Let me know when you when you and your kids, your husband, your friends. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I will let you know, definitely. Uh, when we try the Jolly Bee, because he's from the Philippines and he wants me to try Jolly Bee. We will try it. I'm from India. Hi. Um, cool. Oh my goodness. Holes in the narrative. Yeah, a hundred percent. Concubine slavery was practiced. I mean, the slavery stuff was insane. Like slavery was one of the biggest things for sure, because it wasn't even like he overlooked it. Like Prophet Muhammad, I mean, it was like he actually sold people, like women, sold them and like raped women like it's ridiculous I don't I'm scared that there are people around so I don't want to like start screaming stuff there's no way that these women that were going to be sold and like there are situations where it's like there's no way for example Sophia there's no way Sophia had her dad killed by the by the Muslims her husband killed her brother killed there's no way she was then up for having sex with Muhammad like there's no way that was rape. I'm sorry, that was rape. There's no way she was like, oh yeah, I'm so in love with you now. You're gorgeous. You just killed my whole family. That kind of stuff was like, there's, how? How can this be okay? He abolished slavery? Okay, basically, you don't know about your religion at all if you think that. The only thing that he did was he said, if you impregnate a slave, that child is your legitimate child. That's really the only thing he implemented because slavery was a... There's literally hadiths on him selling slaves. So that means you just don't... That just shows how ignorant you are. Like, literally, you can Google it right now, babes. Literally, I can send you all the links. There's like thousands. <laughs> There's so many. So there you go. This is the problem, guys. This is the problem is that we're talking to people who don't even know their own religion. They don't even know. Like he's, he's like, what? He abolished it. <laughs> Sorry. That was my laugh. 
it's actually a joke. It's actually a joke if you think that. I feel sorry for you guys because you're going to go and realize that he actually partook in it and then now you're going to be mind blown. This is what I went through. I'm glad, I'm glad everyone's going through this though. You know what? We need to go through it. We need to know the truth. We need to know the truth. There's lots of hadiths. Google it, babes. Google it. There's so many. You know what? <laughs> yeah, there's so much out there. I don't understand. I literally have quoted stuff as well. I'm sure there's videos. That I'm, I, I know I've made a bunch of videos years ago that I've quoted specific. I, in fact, I, I can think of a few now. You should watch my video. You're on my, you're on my channel. You should watch my videos. I quote them for you. Why aren't you criticizing? The, of course I criticize the Quran. Of course. Of course. What do you mean? As if I'm going to leave the Quran out. The Quran's got some funky ass crap in there. Trust me. I, I have made videos directly speaking about ayahs. Trust me. There is some weird stuff. There's so much weird stuff in like both. Like that's, that's the thing is I remember even being like, well, it must just be the hadiths. There's so many parts of my journey that I was like trying so hard to make Islam legit. And I remember at one point just being like, okay, maybe I'm just a Quranist. Maybe it's just like, you know, I'm reading into the hadiths, these hadiths, maybe they're inaccurate, but the Quran is the word of God. So I'm going to go with that. But then even when you look in that, oh, there you go, Quran verse hitting your wife when she disobeys. There's so much in the Quran. There's so much. There's even slavery in the Quran. There's so much. Like, you, there's no, like, going around the bush with it at this point. Oh, my God, he's still awake. It's 10 o'clock. My child goes to sleep normally at, like, 6, 30, guys, 7. And he's still awake. Hi. Okay, cool. Me to go? Oh, you want to take over? Well, to be honest, my battery's low anyway, and it's been an hour, so I might, I might just round this up. <laughs> Hold on, my kid's gonna come on it. Say hi. You be, you can't actually show your face. You just have to say hi. Ready, Mubarak. Ready, Mubarak. He doesn't want to say hi. Do you want to say hi? You want to? Ready, Mubarak. Why don't you say good night? Say good night, everyone. You're a bit shy. You're a bit shy. Right. Never no, mind. Okay, never mind. Okay. Right, just just um, round this up and let's go. Because, so so yeah. what do I do now? This is your stream. Huh? What, what do I say? Well, let, let me just let me just say goodbye. Should I say Eid Mubarak with a rain? Hold on, hold on, take him. Take hey, him. come on. One minute, baby, I'm coming. <laughs> mommy's coming. Mommy's coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm just gonna say bye. Okay, guys, I'm gonna put my kid to sleep. Do you wanna say good night? What the? Okay, yeah, yeah, guys, yeah. Eid Mubarak. Yeah. Hope you had a nice Eid, whatever you guys did. And um, I didn't want to leave it on that note, but you know what, guys? Those people that were asking me those questions, guys, <laughs> those people that were asking me those questions and like not knowing the facts about what's out there, watch some of my videos. You know what? Go on Apostate Prophet, watch some of his videos. Go on, who else is there? Abdullah Samir. Go on Haris Sultan. There's so many people out there that will quote, quote you. Go and look what's out there, okay? You know, don't be ignorant to it. Um, anyways. Uh, good night. Lots of love. I definitely will be doing some videos and I'll be doing more live streams. Live streams are easier because I have kids, but I'll speak to you guys soon. Bye. Bye, guys. Yes, I'm, okay, I'm going. Say bye.